Welcome to the third episode in a Legendarium series called Medieval Outlaws. Today we'll be talking about Roger Godbird. We'll be talking about how Roger Godbird started his life as a member of the Nottinghamshire establishment and followed them in a rebellion against the incompetent King Henry III. Roger fought at the battles of Lewis and Evesham, which ended badly for the rebels, and he was forced to become an outlaw. Roger was so successful in his new profession that he got the king's attention and was eventually captured. However, he was pardoned and enjoyed a long, peaceful life after becoming an outlaw. Of all the men who might have inspired the story of Robin Hood, few have as many dramatic parallels as Roger Godbert. He was born in Nottingham sometime around 1240. In time, Godbird became a member of the Nottingham Castle garrison under Earl Robert Ferrer of Derby, one of the richest men in England. Roger Godbird became good friends with Sir Reginald de Grey, the future High Sheriff of Nottingham, often joining his hunting trips into Sherwood Forest. Sadly, there was no Maid Marian, as Roger married a woman not named Marian and had two children with her. However, Godbird would not enjoy quiet family life for long. Earl Robert was mainly focused on managing his estate, but the great political upheavals of the 1260s could not be ignored. The incompetent King Henry III had been mismanaging England for years, raising taxes to finance wars in France and Italy and then losing them. Earl Robert joined the rebels calling for a strong parliament to force the king to behave himself. Roger Godbird followed Ferrers into battle, and Ferrers followed the rebel leader Simon de Montfort. However, Godbert's choice to follow Earl Robert meant a break with his old friend and hunting partner Reginald de Grey, who supported the king. Godbert fought with Earl Robert at the Battle of Lewis on May 14, 1264. Roger crept through the forest by night, taking the high ground. When dawn broke, Godbird faced a royal army that outnumbered the rebel forces by two to one, and led by King Henry's far more capable son, Prince Edward Longshanks. At first, the battle went well for Prince Edward, his heavy cavalry dispersing the rebel left flank. However, as Edward pursued the men on the left, the remaining rebels counterattacked and crushed the royalist forces before Prince Edward could return. The rebels captured King Henry III. For a time, de Montfort was in charge of England. Yet Montfort proved to be no better at running the country than King Henry III had been, giving the spoils of battle to family and friends while ignoring many who fought for him at Lewis. Not surprisingly, Prince Edward took advantage of discontent among the rebels to reverse his fortunes. Roger Godbird had to fight again at the Battle of Evesham 14 months later, in cold, rainy weather. Even while drenched, which would have made his clothes as heavy as armor, Godbird fought on. Though he threw himself into the battle, Prince Edward used his superior numbers well. Rebel knights were dragged from their horses and stabbed to death. Montfort was killed by a 12-man hit squad. Prince Edward took brutal revenge on Montfort, cutting off his head, mounting it on a pike, and hanging his testicles on either side of his nose. Montfort's hands and feet were cut off and sent to the houses of Montfort's enemies as trophies. Within weeks, people were pouring to Montfort's grave where only his trunk was buried, drawn by tales of miracles at his gravesite and the spot where he was slain. For a time, the people of England believed that de Montfort was a saint. However, no one said such things about Earl Robert, who was arrested for treason and imprisoned in Windsor Castle. King Henry's second son, Edmund, seized Ferrer's estate. With his master imprisoned, Godbird found himself without employment, so it's not shocking that Godbird chose to take to Sherwood Forest and live as an outlaw. In doing so, Godbird may have inspired part of the legend of Robin Hood. Yet Godbird's new career set him at odds against his former friend Reginald de Grey. Like Godbird, Sheriff Reginald was a military man and became one of the youngest sheriffs in England in his time. It must have been with some sadness that de Grey set about pursuing his former friend. In Sherwood Forest, Godbird gathered more of Earl Robert's former retainers, many of whom had also lost their land or jobs. They formed a fully functioning criminal gang, with spies and informants tracking the juiciest swag through the Shire. 
While Robin Hood robbed from the rich to give to the poor, Godbird robbed anyone and gave to himself. Once he robbed Stanley Abbey, taking money, horses, and killing a monk. Godbert's outlaw band soon became so infamous that King Henry III himself sent a message to de Grey expressing concern about the number of robberies in Nottinghamshire. He even noted that it was no longer safe to travel the royal roads without having your purse lightened. King Henry III was so concerned that he even sent extra men and wooden barricades to secure Nottingham Castle against Roger's band who by then numbered more than a hundred, enough to match and possibly defeat the garrison. However, Godbert had a castle of his own to retreat to. Sir Richard Folio, a nobleman, gave Godbert refuge in Fenwick Castle. There, Godbert's gang had a place to plan their robberies, giving a cut of the profits to Sir Richard. It's worth noting that Sir Richard Fulio bears a resemblance to a man from the early Robin Hood ballads named Sir Richard at the Lee, who gave Robin sanctuary after he escaped the sheriff's trap at the archery tournament. For a time, it must have seemed that Godbert had things well in hand. Then he was finally chased down by Reginald de Grey. The sheriff caught Godbert at Rufford Abbey. Technically, the sheriff violated sanctuary rules by taking the outlaw on monastery grounds, and he had to pay the abbot a fine. Despite that, de Grey got to keep his prisoner. But much to Grey's fury, Godbert was able to slip his guards and escape. This time, the sheriff received a special grant from King Henry III to defeat the outlaws once and for all. Godbert's next round of freedom lasted only a matter of weeks until he was finally chased down by de Grey's men. This time, de Grey was determined to make certain his former friend did not escape. De Grey moved Godbert three different times, twice to castles under his control, and finally to the Tower of London itself. For three years, Godbert awaited trial for his crimes, but fate intervened again. Just as Robin Hood's outlaw career ended with the return of King Richard in the last reel, Godbert's life was saved, ironically enough, by Prince Edward, who returned from the Eighth Crusade in 1274. By then, King Henry III had died, and the newly crowned King Edward had big plans, but he needed to put the wars of his father behind him. So he issued pardons to the former rebels who still lived, among them Roger Godbert. Godbert then did something surprising. He declared his life of crime to be at an end, rejoined his family, and lived quietly for the rest of his days. His old friend-turned-enemy Reginald de Grey served King Edward Longshanks in the wars in Wales, and later became a member of Parliament. However, the two old enemies were reunited in 1287, when a 20-year-old charge of poaching deer on one of those old hunting trips of theirs was finally brought to court. Medieval justice was not always efficient. The two men had to appear together to clear themselves of the charges, which they did successfully. It also led to them reconciling and resuming their friendship once more. In reviewing Roger Godbert's life, he does share a few things in common with the legendary outlaw, most notably his home in Sherwood Forest and being pardoned by the returning king. However, there's plenty of differences, which means that the identity of the real Robin Hood remains as elusive as the outlaw hero himself. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.